Operation Overlord or D-Day marked one of the strongest indicators of the death of humanity in our age. Operation Overlord was the codename for the Battle of Normandy. The Allied operation that launched the successful invasion of German-occupied Western Europe during World War II. The operation was launched on 6 June 1944, D-Day, with the Normandy landings. A 1,200-plane airborne assault preceded an amphibious assault involving more than 5,000 vessels. Nearly 160,000 troops crossed the English Channel on 6 June and more than 2 million Allied troops were in France by the end of August. The decision to undertake a cross-channel invasion in 1944 was taken at the Trident Conference in Washington in May 1943. General Dwight D. Eisenhower was appointed commander of Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force. General Bernard Montgomery was named commander of the 21st Army Group, which comprised all the land forces involved in the invasion. The coast of Normandy in northwestern France was chosen at the site of the invasion, with the Americans assigned to land at sectors codenamed Utah and Omaha, and the British at Sword and Gold, and the Canadians at Juneau. To meet the conditions expected on the Normandy beachhead, special technology was developed, including two artificial ports called Mulberry Harbors and an array of specialized tanks nicknamed Hobart's Funnies. It's 1944 and US Army has landed on Normandy Beach, with infantry squadrons as well as flame troopers, anti-tank, snipers, engineers and medical support squadrons. They were escorted with multiple squadrons of M4 Sherman and Jumbo tanks. The battle was bloody, for the aircrafts weren't capable of carpet bombing the bunkers on the hills guarding the shore as planned due to heavy fog, which allowed the Germans to fortify the beach even further thus making the beach landings harder and slower, which made the Allies like sitting ducks against the German howitzers. These bunkers were armed with heavy German MG42s, which is a well-known lethal light machine gun that was feared by the Allies, as well as Marine Krusten Battery howitzers of an outstanding caliber of 15 cm, situated near the villages of Longs sur mer The battery was sighted on a 60 meter cliff, overlooking the sea and formed a part of Germany's Atlantic Wall coastal fortifications. It was located between the Allied landing beaches of Golden Omaha and shelled both beaches to deal with the incoming US fleets and possible deployments of armored vehicles. Even though the Allies failed to accomplish their objectives for the first day and suffered a substantial number of casualties, they were capable of breaking through the endless machine gun fire, thus gaining a tenuous foothold that they gradually expanded when they captured the port at Cherbourg on 26th of June, and the city of Caen on the 21st of July. This advancement through and towards French-German occupied territories on the 7th of August caused a lot of stress amongst the German forces, which led to a failed counterattack that left 50,000 soldiers of the German 7th Army trapped in the Falaise pockets by 19th August. This event was brought to existence by the terrifying advancement of the German forces through Allies' lands, which could cause an existential threat to countries such as England and the future of the US.
The technology used by the Germans was advanced and revolutionary, and this materialized in armored vehicles such as the Panzer III and IV series, which were the most common combat vehicles on the battlefield. These tanks or Panzers were medium tanks with a cannon of caliber from 50 up to 75 millimeters. They had excellent mobility and decent armor. The more advanced tanks, however, weren't numerous, for they came into existence late into the war, and the production was more than Germany could handle. Tanks such as the Tiger I heavy tank series, which carried a whopping 88mm cannon that could penetrate the frontal plate of an M4 Sherman at 2 km, and a 100mm frontal armor plate. Or the Panthers, medium tanks which were extremely mobile while presenting a deadly force on the battlefield, for its excellent armor and long 75mm gun that could penetrate most Allies tanks at the time. There were other tanks such as the King Tiger, with the long 88s that could penetrate anything the Allies had, and also presenting heavily sloped armor. And the Yak Tiger, or Hunting Tiger in German, which was the epitome of a tank destroyer, for nothing could penetrate it frontally while carrying a 128mm howitzer that has enough force and explosive filler to annihilate anything in one shot. But not many were built, thus facing one of these tanks was a rare occurrence. As for the aircrafts, the Germans also excelled in that field for their Messerschmitt BF-109 and BF-110 series, as well as the ME-262, which was the first jet fighter in the world, thus marking a new era in aviation. And the Focke-Wulf 190s, which were heavily armed with 20mm cannons to deal with the long-range Allied bombers such as the B-29s and the B-17s. as well as Stuka dive bombers, or Junkers 87, which was infamous amongst the Allies for its Jericho siren. The Germans also developed other technologies such as early concepts of radar UCAVs and Delta Wing aircrafts, etc. The Allies launched a second invasion from the Mediterranean Sea of southern France, codenamed Operation Dragoon on 15th August. And the liberation of Paris followed on the 25th of August. German forces retreated east across the Seine on 30 August 1944, marking the close of Operation Overlord. Between 6 June and the end of August, the American army suffered 124,400 casualties, of whom 20,600 were killed and 10,100 were missing. German forces weren't unscathed either for there were reports of 158,900 men lost between D-Day and the 14th of August, just before the start of Operation Dragoon in southern France. In action at the Falaise pocket, 50,000 men were lost, of whom 10,000 were killed and 40,000 were captured. During the liberation of Normandy, between 13,600 and 19,900 French civilians were killed, and more were seriously wounded.